Nothing gets the blood pumping quite like a good action game. I mean, massive battles, fire, blood, explosions, tanks destroying helicopters, planes destroying tanks, a massive world to explore and destroy. And that's exactly what Just Cause 3 brings to the table, and it never takes itself too seriously. However, is this joyride of mayhem worth getting on? Or is this just a lame kitty ride with an explosive package? Just Cause 3 is the newest open-world, action-filled experience from Avalanche Studios, the same developer that just gave us Mad Max a few months ago. Just Cause 3, of course, being the follow-up to Just Cause 2, and it continues right where that game left off. A little bit later on, after Just Cause 2, Rico Rodriguez, the main character, is now returned to his home country. It's being run now by an evil dictator, and Rico, along with some allies from the past, some newcomers, and a whole group of rebels are going to overthrow the dictator. The storyline of Just Cause 3 gets the job done. It provides an okay narrative to explain why you're going from point A to point B. Never does it really stray from the whole kind of rebels versus the establishment. You know what your point in the, the whole game is, and that is to band with these rebels, build them up, and then overthrow the dictator. And it never deters from that storyline. However, there are some fun moments throughout the main plot that make each and every one of the missions worthwhile watching the different cutscenes and playing through. A few get a little bit stagnant, I mean they can't all have you riding on the wings of a plane as you're taking out other planes nearby or riding on a giant missile, but even the ones that aren't those memorable still provide enough narrative and enough drive to keep you going. The main plot of Just Cause 3 isn't the only draw, of course. A lot of what makes an open world experience a lot of fun is all the other stuff that you can do, and Just Cause 3 has a good amount of it. There's about six or seven different side activities, and along with the side activities, your other goal is to take over and overthrow this dictatorship in all the little areas, destroying all the bases, taking over the different villages that are spread out throughout the land. And there's a lot, and I mean a ton, of these areas to destroy. In fact, there's so many, it ends up getting a bit boring once you get maybe about halfway through them. You'll be like, wow, really? There's more bases to destroy? I mean, you can only destroy a fuel tank so many times before it loses the luster. Yes, the fireball is pretty, but I've destroyed about 200 fuel tanks at this point, and eh, it doesn't have the same appeal anymore. At least the game provides you with a reason to go ahead and destroy all these places, no matter how monotonous it may end up getting. And don't get me wrong, the novelty of going around and destroying all these bases didn't wear off right away. It only wore off after I was probably doing it for about 20 hours or so, it felt like, before it finally started to lose that luster. However, by doing these missions, you're also going to be unlocking the side content missions. You're also going to be getting garages and fast travel points, so there's a good reason why to go ahead and do these. Plus, there is unfortunately a few times in the game where you won't be able to do a certain mission because you haven't liberated either a particular base or you haven't liberated enough in a certain area to unlock a certain mission. These didn't happen that often, but I always kind of like did a storyline mission and did a couple of liberation things and then jump back and forth. So there was only one time at the end of the game where I really had to buckle down and do a, a bunch of the bases in order to unlock one of the main story missions. Missions. For doing the side activities though, you do unlock gears, and the gears are used in order to unlock the different perks in the game. Unfortunately, how they have it set up is each side quest unlocks a certain style of perk. So you may want one particular perk, but you're going to have to go ahead and do a particular side quest that you may not be the greatest at in order to unlock that particular perk. They also get a little bit carried away, as there's a lot of things that are missing that you would expect in a typical game like this, such as sprinting, or being able to dodge roll, or even take cover, and for a while I didn't even think I could aim with the gun, but then later I found out you actually can aim with the gun, but you have to unlock it via the gear perks, and this was a little disconcerting and something that I think was really a misstep from Avalanche. It, it's looking down the barrel of the gun so I can see better. That shouldn't be something I have to earn in a game like this. 
once the action gets going, it definitely takes a little bit of getting used to, since you don't have some of those key features that you would expect, like ducking, taking cover, dodge roll, or sprinting, there is a few things that are added to help you out. The main thing being the grappling hook. The grappling hook becomes the main part of the game. You're going to be grappling hooking everywhere. You're using it defensively to get away from enemy fire. You're using it offensively in order to attach to different things and pull them towards you or pull them into one another or even attach it to somebody and jump into them with a flying kick. You're also going to be using that as a lot of your main transportation to get around quickly since you're unable to run around the map. I ended up using the grappling hook a lot more than I expected, and it's a lot of fun to use once you get used to it. It's really cool that you can go from grappling hook to parachute to wingsuit instantly with just the press of a button, and once you get the hang of this, you can cover massive amounts of distance in a short amount of time, but you just have to mess with it a little bit in order to get used to it. It's very Bionic Commando-esque or Spider-Man-esque. The whole time I'm playing the game, I'm just like, I'm imagining a great Spider-Man game being made with this grappling hook engine. It works better than almost any Spider-Man game I've ever played. And some people are comparing it to Batman, but it works even better than Batman's hook shot as well as his gliding ability in the Arkham games. This is one of the best parts. It's no wonder that they kind of like focused on that, even giving a grappling hook away in the collector's edition of Just Cause 3. This is why you're going to be messing around with this game, and it's what makes the game stand out more so than a lot of the other open world experiences. Besides grappling, hooking everywhere, you're also going to be doing a lot of firefights, and to do that you're going to need some weapons, and there's a good amount of weapons to choose from. There's nothing that really stood out as being unbelievable, but you have your standard fare of like automatic assault rifles, your handguns, uh, submachine guns, shotguns, and rocket launchers, and you can have three weapons at all times. You can't choose from all the different types for those, though. You have like your primary weapons, which is your main automatic gun, you have your secondary weapons, which are like your dueling handguns or maybe a shotgun and then you're also going to have the rocket launcher on your special setting. Uh, there's also grenades for you to use and you can have a few grenades and you can upgrade a lot of the stuff via the different perks if you go ahead and do some of the side activities. Gunplay was a bit awkward at first because I had no aiming, but then once I got the aiming and kind of lowered the sensitivity a little bit, I was having no problem destroying anything in my path. Unfortunately, the AI enemies are quite dumb. They can kind of group up in a massive pile. I blow them away, which is pretty entertaining. Uh, I had them run off of cliffs, uh, jump off of buildings, and do all kinds of other stupid things. These guys are not brain surgeons, that's for sure. While you're fighting all these guys and when taking over bases, you're going to have to destroy a lot of things. And this is the big drawing thing with a game like Just Cause 3 because a lot of things blow up. I mean, it pretty much has like a red stripe on it. You know it's going to explode and usually explode pretty good. And this is satisfying. It's a lot of fun to blow up fuel tanks, at least for the first time hundred or so fuel tanks you destroy. It's a lot of fun also taking out big giant satellite dishes or excavators. It's satisfying as hell to kind of like go through a massive firefight and then aim up a rocket launcher just at the last second and blast away a giant satellite dish. That last piece that you needed to destroy in order to take over a base. The game provides only one difficulty, which was never overwhelming by any means. Honestly, some of the hardest stuff is actually the side activities, trying to get five gears from every one of those. Uh, outside of that, the main missions, I never got frustrated or end up dying a whole lot. I did run out of ammo a couple of times at a few key points, which got a bit annoying. There's usually plenty of ammo depots everywhere, but there's a couple of missions in particular that didn't have ammo readily available, so I kind of had to wing it, which wasn't the greatest. Uh, the final boss is an example of that, and when I was trying to find some ammo, I ended up glitching the boss, and he ended up killing himself, so that's always fun. You do take a ton of bullets, though. Rico Rodriguez is a sponge, and he takes a ton of hits before he ends up dying. I know why they ended up choosing this is, of course, because there is no dodge roll or ducking behind things. They want you in the action the entire time you're playing the game. But for those who prefer not to take shots and be a little bit more strategic in lining up certain things or deciding when to kind of come out of cover and go after things, that's not as enjoyable in a game like Just Cause 3, though you can still snipe from different standpoints if you want to, though I've of course never been a big fan of the sniper rifles. 
Unfortunately though, there's a few glaring flaws with Just Cause 3 that just glare a little bit too much for me to ignore. I know some of the things are a little bit different on the PC, but of course I'm talking about the PlayStation 4 version here. You probably already heard about it if you've looked up anything for Just Cause 3 or played it yourself, but the load times are horrendous, and I mean absolutely horrendous. Uh, I mean, taking upwards of sometimes three, four, five minutes, minutes in order for things to load. Now, there are a few workarounds. You can go offline, like go offline before you even boot into the game, because the game's constantly connected to online, though there's no online play in the game, because you're constantly competing against all the people on your friends list and online for different activities, like how far someone can glide in the wingsuit or how many people they can kill in one clip of ammo. However, that really doesn't provide anything extra. You do get a trophy or two via that, but if you're not caring about that, just turn off the online, at least for now. Hopefully, they'll fix this game in the future. I've also heard if you get a really bad load time in particular, going to the PlayStation menu and then back into the game will supposedly speed things up as well. That's inexcusable, though. These load times are uh, its preposterous. <laughs> Awful, these load times. I, I couldn't believe it, honestly. Uh, I've played a lot of games in the past. I've played a lot of classic games that had some pretty bad load times. But nowadays, there's a lot of open world games. Usually, a lot of open world games may have a massive initial load, like Grand Theft Auto V. But once the game gets going, it's usually pretty good. Uh, this was really telling when I was trying to get into side activities. One side activity in particular took like four or five minutes for me to finally get it to load. I thought the game froze, but the meter in the corner kept going, so it hadn't frozen at least at that point. The game did freeze on me once, but that wasn't anything too major. There's also frame rate issues. I'm not a guy who cares if the frame rate drops from like 60 to 59. However, when the frame rate drops from like 60 to 10, Unfortunately, I can notice it, uh, and there was a lot of times where the frame rate really went in the crapper. Uh, when I was trying to go in the buildings in massive firefights, sometimes when there really wasn't even a whole lot going on, it would just really slow down to a crawl, and it happened too often uh, for a game like this on the modern systems. It, it didn't stop me from liking aspects of the game, but it started to get annoying, especially the more and more bases I was taking, the more and more slowdown, and the longer the load times ended up being, started to grind on my nerves when I was playing Just Cause 3. Graphically, the game's pretty. There is no doubt about this. There are some times in this game that's just absolutely gorgeous. Jumping off of a high mountain and then gliding, looking over the ocean below, and seeing a pretty far way into the distance. You can see some of the towns that you maybe have liberated way out while you're kind of gliding over the world. And it's very, very beautiful to look at. Um, the character, main character models all look good. The NPCs, though, were a little bit lacking. I was seeing the same people over and over again, whether they be NPC villagers or the enemies that I ended up fighting. There was plenty of those kind of generic enemies that you fight over and over and over again, but in a game like this, I guess that can be a little bit forgiven. Before I wrap this up, though, I have to say I had a blast at some of the stupidest things you could do in this game. Like I said, the grappling hook is a ton of fun to use, and you can use it to mess with characters and vehicles. When you're riding on the back of a truck and there's a helicopter coming over and you grapple hook it to the ground and it immediately comes crashing down is an awesome moment and can really help you in battle. I was surprised at how much the grappling hook really helped me in some of the bigger battles of the game. But, if you're like me, a little bit sadistic, you can have a lot of fun launching people. I would just attach it to a random villager, attach it to a light pole, and launch them like a giant slingshot into the valley. Uh, moments like that just made me laugh. I was able to take a break from doing all the bases over and over and over again, and just kind of sit back and just laugh. I mean, this, it's absurd. And just the massive amount of destruction in the game. And the game never takes itself too seriously. There's a lot of funny moments throughout the main narrative, usually involving the side character of Mario, who is hilarious. The voice acting is all decently done, and there's a few that stand out more than others, and a few cutscenes in particular were actually pretty laugh-out-loud funny. And one of the things I love, though, about Just Cause 3, it's a good open-world game for you to create your own fun. Like I said, 
attaching a grappling hook to a vehicle and then launching it up a side of a building or launching someone into a building or into a valley uh, just is is fun. Uh, there, I can't help but have fun just doing stupid things in Just Cause 3, not even focusing on anything in particular. When all is said and done though, Just Cause 3 did provide what I expected, a lot of mayhem, a lot of fun and carefree destruction. However, the side content, and there is plenty, if you like the side activities in particular, you like liberating bases, and I mean really like them, there's a lot to do here. I mean, you're going to be spending a lot of hours taking over all the bases amongst the different islands. However, it starts to tax on me after a while, and the problem is the technical issues, the really bad frame rate at moments, and the absolutely abysmal loading times for the PS4 version in particular just put a damper on my experience. The narrative was okay. It provided enough for me to keep going, but it's not exceptionally long either. I spent actually much more time working on those side activities and taking over the bases than I did on the main story of the game. So in the end, I'm going to be giving Just Cause 3 a 6 out of 10. It's a fun open world game. If you love stupid, destructive mayhem, you're going to be able to at least get a few hours of fun and enjoyment. Though you may want to wait a little bit for them to patch some of the glaring flaws in the game before you end up picking up your copy. But with that, this is going to wrap up this review. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.